Welcome to my basic beaver snaring video. Uh, this video I'm going to kind of show you some very, very basic snare sets for beavers and a little bit of how-to behind it. So we're out here in the west and we've got a small creek in the background. You can probably hear it. And uh, we've got problem beavers that keep da damming off the irrigation over here. I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, anyways, I, I, I've got to my first set that I'm going to set up and this is just a channel that the beaver are traveling down. I'm, I'll show it to you. I'm going to set the camera up and, and let you take a look at what I'm doing here. So here's our channel down here and it leads from about where my shadow is kind of back behind. Hey Jack. And then we're going out to the main creek out here. So a definite beaver channel. If I had a 330 with me uh, definitely would put one or two actually in here. It's a pretty long channel. Looks like it goes about 60 feet, but uh, we're just doing snares today. So let me get the camera set up and I will uh, go from there. So what I've got here is I've got a 564 1 by 19 cable with a micro lock. It's 60 inches long. And all I'm going to do is I want the pinch point on this channel. It's right here in front of me. I see it. It's under the ice. This is about 18 inches deep. Right here it's only 12. So that's where I'm going to set my snares, right up there. All I'm going to do, I got an extension cable on this snare. All I want to do, I got a rebar, two foot rebar stake just for this one. I'm going to put it up here behind me in the uh, willows. That way they'll get tangled up up there and not uh, ruin this set so it's gonna go right back here jack throw me my hammer would you gotta be careful with beavers because they will dig at the at your set if they're when they're hung up so they're extremely intelligent for being a big rodent so Take that. I got some uh, just regular concrete tie wire here. I'm going to pull out a small jag of that. Maybe about 16 inches long. And then I've got an old beaver chew stick here. So that's going to go in here in the mud. I'm going to go ahead and break that ice. It's real thin, just barely freezing up at night. like that. Get right in my channel. Okay, I'm going to reposition here. I got Jack helping me. So I got you moved up here a little closer so you can see this set. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tie wire, put it around my stick and give it a good twist there. But really I'm going to give it, twist it nice and tight. Just about the point where it wants to break. Take my snare. I got a loop here that I, I like. That loop is about 10 inches. Take and I'm going to put this on to my, twist this on really tight. I've got a ton of videos on how to set a snare. Fence snare, beaver snares, whatever. I do them all the same. I twist that up, set my loop where I want it in the water. So that beaver is going to be diving down and running near the bottom of this set. So that's where my snare wants to be, is clear down low. Got the loop in the water. Put my foot under. Yeah, I got to go a little bit deeper with it. Still not quite. Oh, he's going to be right on the bottom. So get my support wire set a little bit deeper there. There. Now I'm right on the bottom with that set. It's just right in that gap. 
right down there in front of me. This support right here is going to help hold it really well. They're going to swim through and uh, get caught. It's, it's that simple. Blind set. It's a great set for beavers. The last thing we're going to do, Jack, hand me your big stick. The last thing we're going to do is Jack found this one. And in case this water thaws out before we catch a beaver, we're just going to put this stick in here as a dive stick. It just keeps everything, it just keeps them if they're swimming above water, they'll swim, dive underneath that. So, anyways, there's this channel. It goes a long ways up through here, anchored over here. When he gets caught, he's going to come out. He's going to fight around here, but most likely he's going to come out and be caught over here, wrapped around some brush. So, that's our first set. We'll go back to the main creek now. We'll come up to our next set. You see that? That's our beaver lodge right there. Pretty small one, but a lodge nonetheless. They have a bank den up here behind us we'll go look at. I realize we're into the sun, but what I want to show you is this run here, this trail. So it comes out of there straight up, and it goes up to these willows and up to that other 30-foot long canal that we were just at. There's trails all over in these willows, so... Uh, we're going to go ahead and set a couple. We're going to set a blind set here. We're actually going to make this a caster set. Not really caster mound, but just a caster set. So let me get uh, let me get down there. We got the exact same setup. I already put my stake in the ground. I got an extension cable and that 564 snare. We're going to set this right up in this trail. Let's see if I can get you in a position we're looking right in the sun on this set so I'll see if I can get you positioned okay so I'm just gonna take a, another chunk of my wire here or my support it's my support stick you see me putting in get it in here somehow where it's fairly solid and then we're just going to get this to where it doesn't wiggle at all. Don't want any wiggle room here. Twist it around to where it's solid. Uh, not on this one, Jack. Drop my snare down in place over the edge. Got my 9 inch, 10 inch loop. That Whatever. One don't have ice on. No ice on here. This is right in the sun, isn't it? Yeah, but I can't pull right now. So, this is a pretty tight little area, so they're, the snare loop's going to be just a touch smaller. Now, this beaver knows this snare's here. When he comes up, it's no secret this thing is in place. The secret is he doesn't know what it is. So that's the snare set. I got some beaver caster lure here. Uh, so that's the snare set there. Uh, we could leave it just like that, but we're going to try to catch them pretty quickly. So I'm going to come back here about, oh, two feet, 18 inches right at the edge of the water. And I'm just going to put some caster on a stick like that and let I'm him smell it. Jack found us a stick, so if we put this caster, put a pretty good glob of it, and if I put it right down near the water, it, uh, that's frozen, there we go, it helps get down along the water a little better, the, the, the cool air will keep it down, the smell and get it out in the, out in the creek out there, you know, we got, probably eight feet from where he's swimming. So there's a channel in this that he's swimming out in the main creek. So again, we're just in the same area here. Uh, this is a small creek. Right here in front of me, there's a trail where the beaver's swimming. All the rocks are kicked clean. And then also on the other side, there's one that I can see. Uh, check this out. 
This is a food bed, feed bed over here. And I know we're looking in the sun, we're about to change directions. So we've been digging in there. And then down here, here's the lodge. Here's his feed pile. In case anybody doesn't know what a feed pile looks like, these small creeks are real, real easy to find. That's all the uh, willows that he's brought in here, getting ready for uh, winter, for when it freezes up. He'll go, he has a little tunnel from, that's good enough, Jack. You're gonna get, you're gonna get wet. <laughs> he's got a size eight hip boots on, so. Okay, there's the lodge. He'll come out of the lodge and he, it's about four feet deep where this food pile is. He'll come out of the lodge in the winter time when it's all frozen up and grab some sticks, take them back into his lodge right there. And it's only about 15 feet out. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit of about a, a, a crossover. So we're at the dam. It's not very big in here. About 15, 20 feet wide about uh, 20 inches deep so we're gonna have a hard time drowning a beaver on this this will be a great spot for a dam crossover trap but how do we decide what the crossover is there's water running over in several places one by jack one there in the middle one right here by me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look downstream on a small creek like this it's very easy this is so shallow over here on this side where it's green, it's only about uh, anywhere from three to about four or five inches deep. But you get over to this side of the bank and now it's a foot, foot and a half. There's a channel where he's swimming and allows us to figure out where he's going. So let's say it didn't have that. Let's look down right here in front of me. Say it doesn't have that channel. Look at right in this area where he would cross over there's moss, there's lots of moss and, uh, and the, the natural mud has settled in. So let's go to this next one. We know this is the one he's crossing. And look at this, it is clean, clean. All those rocks are nice and shiny and clean. The sticks are clean. So he's definitely crossing over right here and he's just sliding right down that or coming right back up either way. And that's his channel. So that would be a great spot for a 330 down there in that deeper water put a dive stick or a great spot right here for a snare and real quick while we're here and we got clean clear water that's beaver scat that is beaver scat it's just a bunch of sawdust so here's another inlet here a little channel going up to the willows another great great uh, spot for a set so we're gonna put a, a snare right in that huh so I'm going to set you up and I'll show you this quick crossover. It's all set the same, but I'm going to show it to you. Okay guys, same thing that we were doing. That's going to be our guide stick. Let's do something different for a support. Let's put this one in right here. That'll work good for a support. I'm just going to go around this here this stuff is pretty simple once you know how to read them know their habits know their uh, travel pattern or or be able to learn it by looking here so there's our snare support 564 cable I'm gonna run this one right in between everything so it's not quite so obvious and I'm gonna set it just above just above water level because you set it right on the water level and debris will wash down because all the, a lot of water is coming over this crossover debris will wash down and just knock your stair, snare down you'll come back without anything but a bunch of grass or weeds or any of that so so now I've got this snare is all cockeyed sideways you can see that all I'm going to do to remedy that, just grab a hold of it, twist it sideways. See that? What are you doing? Huh? Hi, Jack. Hi. 
Jack's running the beavers with us today. Just a quick adjustment here. There we go. Right at their their level. When they, as long as the water doesn't come up too much more, we're safe. I give it about an inch above the water. You're not sinking? Okay, I'm going to turn around and show everybody that, Jack, so they can see what we're looking at. Nope, we're good. We're good. So here's the snare set. As crude as it looks, it works. See, it's just a half inch above the water level. That way debris will, will go through. The beaver's head should go through just fine. Uh, that's about a 10 inch loop there. And uh, we're cabled off over here onto the bank with a steel stake. So that's our set. Okay, here's another quick little set. Uh, they're, they're super easy. There's a little dig out there where he was crawling up and down the bank. So I added my lure right there. I set my snare. I added that just blocker stick for good measures. There's a feed bed right across over there. And right over here by Jack, about to 20 yards away. I set one more in here. And this is just a kind of a inlet on the creek. The main creek's over there. And again with the lure. It's about 24 inches on this side of the snare. That way he really would like to come through and investigate. So trail goes along the bank there for a raccoon if you want one or down through here. But we don't want any. So okay we came down. We're on a different family of beavers. Same creek. There's a feed pile right over there. A uh, dam up there about 40 yards and a dam about 30 yards down below us. We're just in one of the pools. So the sun's right in the way of this set. This is just a natural, natural set right here. I know it's got a glare, but so he's gonna swim back and forth through here naturally. Um, but what I'm gonna do is my trick on how to just kind of get him confused and over in the area uh, just swimming back and forth because that's his main area that he swims around the other side of this bush that's the deeper spot but this spot he's been in here there's a feed bed old feed bed right here he's not afraid to be in here uh, he's blocked down pretty good I'm gonna put some lure on that branch right above it's about four feet away but it's up high enough he can't reach it and then I'm gonna put some over here on this branch right by me over here that way he's going to go back and forth between the two smells uh we could leave it at a blind set but the lure gets him in here a little bit quicker usually uh they'll, we'll catch him a little bit faster so if otherwise we might have to wait several checks to get to get him there is some fresh beaver scat down here in the bottom and we have miles of snare holes over there we're just going to set a couple in this pool for today and come back. We're getting short on time. Well, we're out here skinning some stuff. It's nice outside today. Jack and I, he's got a muskrat he's working on. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys about that OSP. I told you I'd try to get an update on that. And uh, so I did. Anyways, it's kind of going to be a few minute long story, I'll tell you and then uh, go from there. So what happened is I'm out at this, this property out on the creek and the, the I, I've trapped it for like 12 years. One year, last year I did not trap it. Uh, come to find out, I've trapped it for two different people that lease the ground and last year the property sold. So I didn't trap it and I didn't go out there. Well, I went this year. The guy who leases it called me and asked me if I'd go trap it. And, of course, I did. Shot that beaver footage you've seen. And uh, uh, went in, set everything up. The next day, I had two beavers caught. Well, I had two beavers, and then I had, they called the sheriff's department. 
they didn't realize I was going to be in there trapping beavers. And so somewhere there was a breakdown in the communication between the, the, the person leasing the ground and the owner. So they did not want beavers trapped. So uh, I guess that's that was the case. I've talked to OSP, uh, confiscated all my trap, confiscated the two beavers that were caught and uh, came and met with me and told me I was doing they weren't going to be issuing any citations it was an honest mistake the owners didn't realize I was even in there they just thought somebody was trespassing on their property that's why the the authorities were called but uh, yeah that's it long and short of OSP uh, was very nice to deal with I, I got uh, Trooper Zimmerman was the guy, and he was just phenomenal. I've dealt with OSP a few times over the years. Uh, most of the time, issues like this where it uh, should have been avoidable. So we've got this beaver here that we caught on that same property. Uh, everything froze up. The ground, or the, the ground, the water, we set everything for open water, and we got a cold snap, and it dropped down to like negative 2. Some areas were less than that. Well, it froze everything up. So we had about a week of just checking ice. Now everything's thawed out, so we should be back going good. And uh, I guess that's about it. Well, we're back, we're back in the small creek doing some checking. And uh, I had a snare in the trail, kind of the same type of sets I was showing you. I didn't show you this exact set, but either way, we've got a beaver in here. so. Back here in the brush, I'll take the camera and go take a look at it. I'm using Steph's camera. She's not real wild about me doing this. Oh yeah, that's a nice big beaver. There he is back in there. There we go. So the set was right over underneath that log. Right there. And he's on the cable in the snare, so I'll get him taken care of and show him to you. Drag him up here on the shore and see what he looks like. Make a pretty good size beaver. Yeah. That's a nice big beaver. Probably about a uh, 45 pounder or so. Good adult. Maybe a little more. So, uh, anyways, the week's been pretty slow. All this water, we had a cold snap, and this water froze up. It dropped down minus uh, zero, well, minus two, I think, and everything froze. So all of our sets were, were set up for uh, open water. They hadn't been working most of the week. Finally thawed out two days ago, and uh, we should be back in business. So take this one to the pickup we got we're just starting this morning so we'll keep on checking we're out here just checking these beaver snares yeah, and we caught that one we viewed him video from the other side but he was caught there last check and we roll up here we've got quite a bit of mess tore up so uh, we've got another one in here matter of finding him now I'm looking for him see all this so it was a crossover set right there you seen that set I hope and uh, so he's in this debris somewhere I see the wire going in oh there he is I see him right in the middle of that uh, it's like a nice two-year-old beaver right here So one thing about these small creeks, trapping these, uh, you, you got to be real careful on how many you take out. You got to be real conscious on not taking too many. So if we can get a couple of adults and maybe a, a, a two-year-old or two, and then that's about it. So uh, they're pretty well protected in this area from predators and other trappers. 
So anyways, we'll get him taken care of and I'll let you take a look at him. Okay, we got this guy taken care of. Looks like a nice two-year-old beaver. Set you up and let you take a look at him here. Maybe. There's the support stick right there. With the crossover. Yeah. Nice little two-year-old. Not a bad specimen. We'll take him home with us. We're going to go up and finish checking the few we have in this little area and then we've got a few more down the creek to check. So I'll step off of this main trail here. We're in a however many year drought and oh hey look at this. Look at this. All right guys. That's what we like. Another bee. This was just a uh, trail type set. He chewed most of it up over there, but it was just uh, a snare in the trail going through. And uh, hopefully I got it on the earlier sets. Anyways, let me set this down and go get it. That's a nice one. Nice two year old here. So that's good. We've taken out one adult and two of these two year olds. So the next time down, we'll go ahead and pull these sets. Cause like I said, we don't want to take too many. We just want to keep them managed in this area. Here's the old feed bed. And this was all right on top of the water and it's up at least a foot. A uh, really warm day, lots of rain. Oh, wait. Nope, it's still there. So that snare's still in place. Yep, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's that other trail snare. I, I know I showed you in the video. This is a much bigger beaver. Neck right around the neck. Looks like he... <laughs> I'll get out of the shadow. Come on, Jerome. Is that any better? Okay. <laughs> the snare was right in between these two. There was some real slow still water. And he did not struggle. It must have been just a feed bed I seen that looked tore up. He's got a few of them cut down, but not a whole lot. Uh, that's a big beaver. That's a big, uh, guessing like a 40 pounder. So let me set the camera. I don't have nowhere to set the camera out in the middle of the creek here. I'll figure it out and I'll Pull him up for you. Well, he did some digging in here. So, guys, you can't see this, but right underneath me there's a willow, and he wrapped around clear down low. And I don't know if the water level rising it drowned him or what. He is caught around the neck. So, and that's a big bee. Ooh. Check it out. Yeah, dang. This is not not too good. It's good in a way, but it's a nice big one. Uh, I've got about 400 yards to my pickup. I've already got another beaver in the pack basket. It's a heavy one. 50 pounds probably. So, uh, very cool. These, these small creeks and the snares, I'm telling you, there's no way, to, now I could drown them. There's enough water in here I could drown them now, but when I said it, there wasn't enough water for drowning. So this is the only other option is this or cotton bears. And unless a guy's got like, or a trapper's got like uh, lots and lots of money invested in beaver trapping, it's hard to have a hundred cotton bears. Well, I have well over a hundred snares for these beaver. I got like 400 that I use for my coyotes and my beavers all the same snare but the thing is each snare cost me 74 cents to build so that versus a 20 or 25 30 dollar 330 it's easy to have lots of 
equipment to go trap and maybe get some of these beavers. Well, this is going to conclude our basic beaver snaring video. I got a little hike. I got about 400 yards to go. This little guy, this big one in my back, it's a good feeling. Thanks for watching.